Peace. I want to build on the evil, satanic, European origins of Halloween. How this shit all got started. This is not for all Negroes because we know most Negroes, especially in America, y'all love celebrating Master Holiday. Y'all love doing what Master tell y'all to do. Y'all love celebrating what Master tell y'all to celebrate. So we know it's gonna hurt y'all feelings to hear a lot of this truth. So this is not for a lot of y'all niggas. This is for the niggas who've been celebrating blindly and ignorantly and wanna know the truth. And remember, it's okay to be ignorant, but if you're trying to stay ignorant and not know the truth, that's when you got a problem. So let's build on this shit. So around 2000 years ago, you had a group of white boys, a gang of white boys, one of the top gangs in Europe. They called themselves the Celtics. Yes, these are the same Celtics that you niggas hear the Boston Celtics are named after. That's the reason why they have a four leaf clover representing their team logo, because the Celtics were basically based out of Ireland. That was their gang turf for real. But they ran a lot of Western Europe and a lot of Eastern and Central Europe. But Ireland was their main gang turf. So these Celtics were the people who started Halloween, right? The Celtics had a line of priests under them who called themselves Druids, D-R-U-I-D-S. Druids stands for men of the oak or oak tree. That's the reason why the oak tree in general is one of the most so-called sacred talked about trees in Europe and it's so bragged about because of the Celtic regime. So you got the Celtics, which is which was the biggest white boy gang in Europe, damn near in the world. They had other crackers under them, which were their priests, and they were called Druids. So both the Druids and the Celtics created a three-day festival in honor of the devil deity that they all worshiped in Europe, which they called Samhain. His name is spelled S-A-M-H-A-I-N, but it's not, it's not pronounced how it's spelled, it's pronounced Samhain. And they named a three-day festival, which lasted from October 29th to October 31st in honor of this devil deity they worship. So uh, during this three-day festival, right, of Samhain from October 29th to October 31st, it was nothing but human sacrifice, devil worship, um, humans being beheaded because of human sacrifice. And they would do this ritual to where they would take huge um, turnips, orange turnips, and they would carve eyes and a mouth into it. And that was supposed to be a representation of a beheaded human, right? And they would take a lot of the fat that they would take from the humans that they killed and sacrificed, they would take human fat and stuff the turnips with it. And they would put a, a, a light or a lamp or, or some type of light inside the, the turnip. And that was your early era of so-called jack o -Latins. And the story behind why it's the name jack o because it was a guy that roamed around Europe named Jack. And he was supposed to be a drunk. And the story was that he had a one-on-one -on -one with a devil and the devil was throwing hot coal at him. So he was stripped naked in, in the coal, but he had a piece of hot coal so the hot coal he put in the turnip and carried it around so he can keep himself warm. And that was the early supposedly so-called variants of the jack o right? So you got Druid priests, right? Walking around Europe dressed as so-called ghosts or evil spirits or evil souls. And they're walking around the community with a handful of turnips that's stuffed with human remains that's supposed to represent beheaded humans and they're walking around in the community and you know what they're yelling outside of people's doors trick or treat these are your early makers of halloween now we're going to keep proceeding in this motherfucker so around those days when motherfuckers heard trick or treat that was like hey, debo coming debo that shit was probably 10, 20 times worse than that. Because niggas knew it was either time for them to get killed or one of their family members to get killed. 
right? So even another origin of the trick or treat thing was when a lot of the people used to leave treats outside of their window sills, hoping that those treats were just enough for the druid priests to not bother them, to want to just go off and not have to ask for no human sacrifice or nothing. But a lot of the times, the little treats that they were sitting in the window wasn't enough. So when them priests was outside them doors yelling trick or treat, they would knock on that door and they would ask for a treat. The treat to them was give up one of your animals, give up one of your family members or your friends. And in exchange for that, we would give you one of these stuffed turnips that we carved the face in and that we stuffed human remains in. And we would give that to you to protect you from the evil spirits that might haunt you just because you sacrificed one of your loved ones to us. This is the early origins of this shit. This is how a lot of these things are still going on to this day and we're still keeping this dumbass culture going. So the treat to them would be to sacrifice your loved one or your animal. The treat to you would be a stuffed turnip that looks like a beheaded head from a human to you to protect you from the evil spirits that you might get for sacrificing somebody. And the trick was if you just was one of them tough motherfuckers that said, nah, I ain't giving up nobody to none of you motherfuckers. Fuck all y'all. They would take blood from that, from, from a lot of that human fat that they had in one of them turnips and they would write what they call a hexagram, a six pointed star with a circle around it. That represented death. You get what I'm saying? They would draw that on your door and the trick was that you would have illusions in your head evil spirits will haunt you and your mind will play tricks on you to the point where you would be feared you you would be so feared that you would die of fear and that would be the trick so that's the treat the trick or treat that's the origins of this whole thing so while the uh the druid priest was going around the community collecting human sacrifices so they can uh have a lot of people for the ritual the celtics was out grabbing uh what they call wicker sticks and every uh Samhain festival or Samhain holiday or every halloween from the 29th to the 31st they would build a wicker man the wicker man stood about 30 to 40 feet high and it had um cells in it it had little cages in it and those cages were for the druids to store all the human sacrifices that they collected throughout their their trick-or-treating and they were stored in this cage, in the Wicker Man. And if the Wicker Man got too full, and it was a big statue, they would have Wicker cages outside just in case the Wicker Man got too full. So, when the Druids would come back from trick-or-treating at the end of the night, they would always meet at this spot called Stonehenge. Stonehenge is an actual temple that had about, they say, 4,000 or more bones from human sacrifices buried underneath the temple. And that's just the smallest one in British in Britain. There's many of them in Europe. But they used to always meet there right after the, uh, after the trick-or-treat night or whatever. And they used to play this game. This is when the Druid priests would have their so-called fun, right? They would play this game where they would fill up a, a big old pot of super, super hot, cinnamon juice or some type of sweet liquid and it would be boiling for like four or five hours they say the 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 liquid was like at least 212 220 degrees fahrenheit the least that's how hot it was you know what i'm saying and they would put apples in these pots with this boiling 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 liquid substance in it and what people had to do was they had to in order for them to be free they had to go in head first with their arms, with their hands tied around their back. And they had to go in head first to try to get the apple on the first bite. So a lot of people would be like, yeah, you know shit, I'll do it for my freedom. But you got to look at how hard that is. In 200 and something degree liquid, you dipping your head in there. If the liquid gets on your mouth, if it gets close to your face, it's, bur it's burning your flesh. If it gets down your throat, it's burning your respiratory system all up. Burning you damn near to the white meat. 
And then if you didn't get it the first try, a lot of them was beheaded. But a lot of them that didn't get it the first try, they were locked up in the Wicker Man and in the cages. And they were saved for the human sacrificing burning ritual that happened at the end of the night, right? So they would do this game, and in today's time, they call that game bobbing for apples. And guess what? In today's, in today's time, they still do the apple game on Halloween with the kids. Ain't nothing changed. So at the end of the apple game, when the druids had their little sick-ass fun, the people who didn't get killed for not getting the apple on the first try, they were thrown in the cages for the big ceremony at night. The big ceremony was when all the human sacrifices just get burned the fuck alive until they become bones. And then when they become bones, they're gathered up again and they're relit again. And then the Druid priests would pray over these bones because they know they did some bullshit and they don't want no evil spirits to come back to them for doing some bullshit to innocent people. That was, that was the early makings of a bone fire. They called that a bone fire. As time progressed and people tried to get away from the past, they started calling it a bonfire. Bonfire comes from bonfire. They just made it a little bit more lighter because they didn't want the origin coming back to light. Don't forget that. And a lot of people still doing bonfires to this day for celebrations, telling scary stories with a bonfire, using clothes or sticks or wood or whatever, telling who haunted stories around the bonfire the rituals still exist they are still here bro so while these bones from all these human sacrifices was burning alive all these innocent people dead as hell the druids still felt guilty like dang man I, I know some karma gonna come back to me type shit that's what they were thinking so they were so paranoid in due time as the festival became more popular through the years, the Druid priests started wearing costumes and different face masks and different garments and stuff around the bonfires because they believe if they dressed in evil costumes, that the evil spirits that would come to haunt them for doing bullshit to innocent people, they, would, they wouldn't be able to identify them as regular people or evil spirit. They thought the evil spirits would get confused that they was the dressed as the evil spirit. So with the Druids dressing up as costumes, looking like evil souls, and with the Druids trying to disguise themselves from evil spirits from burning innocent people that were called human sacrifices, these two things are the origins of why your kids wear costumes on Halloween. Rather you know it or not, rather you want, oh my God. Yes, that's the truth. And the truth don't give a fuck about none of you niggas' feelings. And this is how you get the word Halloween, right? The name Halloween. Around the 700 ADs, basically the 8th century or whatever, these two crackers, Pope Gregory III and Pope Gregory IV, one of them declared November 1st to be All Saints Day. Then All Saints Day, this is around the time when the Roman Catholic Church was taken over by force too, with the Crusades and everything forcing Christianity on people and shit. So when Pope Gregory the third and the fourth named uh, or designated November 1st as All Saints Day, the name started to change. It started to change to All Hallows Day. And in that time, hollow as a verb meant holy, but as a noun, it meant saint. So you get what I'm saying? So it went to All Saints Day to All Hallows Day. All Hallows Day turned into Hallow Mass. Hallow Mass turned into Halloween. The word in is a contraction for Eve. So when you put it all together, Halloween means the Eve before Hallow Mass or Hallows Day or All Saints Day, which is on November 1st. So Halloween or Hallow Eve would be October 31st. That's where you get the name Halloween from. You get what I'm saying? So, as Halloween progressed throughout the years, you had all the crackers from Ireland, Great Britain, Great Britain, the UK, all these crackers coming to America. And they brought all their cultures with them, including the Halloween culture. 
right? And what was native to the land over there, they had a lot of turnips in, um, in uh, Ireland and all over the UK. When they came to America, what was native to America was pumpkins. So when they used to carve all the little human faces in the turnips and stuff them with um, human fat and put them on people's doorsteps in exchange for a human being, when they came to America, they continued the culture, but they just continued the culture with pumpkins. That's the reason why pumpkins are now representation of Halloween. The reason why you see a skeleton being a representation of Halloween is because when they used to have human sacrifices and burn them down to the bone, that was the only thing left. So you got the pumpkins, you got the, the skeletons, and you got the treats that signify the human sacrifices. All three of these things make up the devilish culture, white European devil culture of Halloween. This is facts. A lot of the Roman Catholic Church around that time, they were kind of ashamed of the past of Samhain and that whole era. So they tried to change, they tried to change it around the All Saints Day, Hollow Mass and all of that. That's the reason why they changed the name. And they didn't keep it under the same name because Samhain was the name of a devil deity anyway. So they didn't want no dirt on their name from their past ancestors. So that's why they changed the name. And of course, they stopped the tradition of human sacrificing. Well, they didn't. They just, they just didn't do it as hard as they did in Ireland when they came to America. So in place of humans being sacrificed as treats to the Druids, you know, industry started being a big thing in America. So the candy companies were the new treats instead of human beings like they were in Ireland and in the UK. Candy became the new treats. So the candy companies and the candy industry started making bank in billions and billions. The costume companies started making billions and billions. And this is how you got today's Halloween. So you might not think, oh man, you know, well, th this is just harmless. You keep you keeping the spirit of devil worshiping and human sacrificing alive. The only thing they did, they found some way to market this day around kids. So y'all don't even know that low key subconsciously you're sacrificing your kids to a devil practice that's been practiced in this fucking society for ages. That's just a fact. Rather you want to realize it or fucking not. This is the fucking truth. And you can't sit here and complain about what the white man doing to you and doing this and doing that when you sitting here keeping this devil worshiping culture alive. I know so many people who want to talk so much shit. Oh, free Palestine. Oh, I hate white people. Well, black people, we do we need justice. But you sitting here advocating for a devil worshiping fucking day. And I, like I said, it's okay to be ignorant and not know. But if you don't know and you refuse to stay in the dark, those are the people that's going to keep the world in a bad place, bro. No progression. So that's all I'm saying, man. Know what the fuck you niggas are celebrating. Black people, the only people I know that celebrate everything without knowing what the fuck they celebrating, bro. This whole... The whole day of Halloween is is dedicated to devil worship and human sacrifice. And y'all sending your kids on trick or treat missions. They still doing the same trick or treating that the Ireland crackers did. They just not sacrificing human bodies. They collecting candy. The crackers back then was collecting bodies. They still bobbing for apples at Halloween parties. They still wearing Halloween costumes. They still saying trick or treat, knocking on people's doors. The culture is still here, people. When you know better, you do better. And history always erases the mystery. Peace.